Hello lovely people, today we're going to tackle a extremely extremely important topic that always raises a lot of questions. How do I choose my crossovers for my drivers? What are the best crossovers and that kind of stuff and that kind of stuff. So there are quite a few ways how you can go about the crossovers. Uh, and it depends if you can measure the frequency response of any of your drivers. Do you have a microphone? Do you have any kind of data for your drivers like spec sheets or with TS parameters and other stuff? Or you don't have literally anything, nothing. You just have a random driver and you don't know what to do or you don't, you just bought a driver and doesn't supply anything. So let's start with the simplest option is when you don't know absolutely nothing about the drivers that you have. So you have like some textbook crossovers that a lot of people recommend and use. So uh, for subwoofers and typical, so typical system is a subwoofer with six and a half and maybe a mid range and a tweeter. So typically you're crossing subwoofer to the mid base at around 80 Hertz. So you choose high pass for the subwoofer at 80 Hertz and for six and a half, 80 as well. You can do 70, you can do 90, whatever. Now mid ranges, uh, depending on size, you can have five, four, three, two in mid, mid range, depending. And depending on the size, the bigger the mid range, you can cross it lower. So a high pass for like for a four inch, typically something around 250 Hertz. Uh, so if it's a smaller mid range, like two inch, that's going to be around like 500 Hertz or something like that. And for a tweeter, uh, let's say like three, three, four K, 3000 Hertz or 4000 Hertz. So this is when you do know absolutely anything about the drivers and you just just want some random something. Now, what kind of crossovers to use? Because crossover is is just not a frequency, yeah. So if you don't if you don't know anything about your drivers and you have only frequencies, uh, everybody always recommends to use uh, Linquence Riley, twenty four dB per octave. That crossover, everybody recommends it. And if you don't know anything about the drivers, just use that. Happy days. Now, what if you have some data about the drivers? What if you have a frequency response? What if you have some kind of documentation and that kind of stuff? So let's start with uh, the fact that if you cannot measure anything, but you have a data sheet for a speaker driver that you're using. So we're going to take, for example, a few different drivers. So I just found it online, uh, DS18, six and a half inch. That's a pro audio mid range driver. It's a high sensitivity driver and it has, it has uh, a lot of uh, these data sheets have frequency response. And it says like from to this frequency response that you have on the packaging or anywhere, it doesn't mean absolutely anything. Just ignore it. It, it doesn't mean anything and don't look at it at all. What you have to find is a free air resonance of the driver. So it's a TS parameter, FS, and it's something, something hertz. So for this particular driver, the FS is 113 hertz. Now, some uh, uh, manufacturers give you something like this, which is recommended high pass crossover which recommends you to use 120 Hertz crossover. So that's a guide that you can use. So if you have this driver, put 120 Hertz. Now, again, what kind of crossover are they recommending? Because as I showed you before, you can have different topologies of crossover, Butterworth, Bezel, Chebyshev, Linkwitz, and you have different slopes from, so this one, uh, Bezel, let's say, you can go 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 40. Which one do they recommend? I have no idea. Most of the time, uh, they recommend a 12 dB uh, Linkwitz Riley crossover. 
but this is a guide that you can use. Yeah. Another guide, if you can find the FS of the driver, uh, most of the time people recommend uh, using uh, for the mid-range and the tweeter two times the FS value. So let's have a look at a typical tweeter. So this is a uh, uh, home audio, car audio, SB Acoustics, SB29. That's what I have in my car. And here you have, um, where is it? FS, there you go. Free air resonance is FS 680 hertz. So let's say 700 hertz. So if I'm using a 24 dB Linkus Riley or any kind of other topology but 24 dB, people recommend uh, for mid range and tweeter to use two times FS. So for example, if I have 700, I would use uh, 1.4K here. Uh, 1400, 14.4K, Linkus Riley 24. That's a typical, uh, like two times FS. If I would want to use a shallower slope, let's see, uh, like 12 dB, that case is going to be three times FS. Yeah, so 700 times three, so 2100, something like that, yeah, with 12 dB slope. That would be like a recommendation. So 24 dB slope is two times FS, 12 dB slope, three times FS, six dB slope, four times FS. That's like a general rule. And uh, you can see here, uh, the power rating, it has a star here, an asterisk. And here at the bottom, if I'm gonna zoom in, it says that this power rating for this tweeter is 100 watts if you use a high pass Butterworth uh, 2.6K at 12 dB per octave. So this as well for rated power is like a recommendation, recommended crossover that you can use. Yeah. So a lot of uh, quality driver manufacturers will give you, uh, even if they're not going to give you a recommended crossover, they will give you an FS, which will be a guide for you how to choose the minimum uh, crossover frequency. Now, it doesn't mean that you cannot cross, like if this driver is a 1.4K, uh, where is it? Uh, 1.4K at 24 dB. It doesn't mean that you cannot play it lower. But, so this recommended, let's say it was 2.6 at 12 dB. So let's put what they recommend, 2.6 and 12 dB. Now, it doesn't mean that you cannot use a lower crossover point. You can. So if you use, the only thing that you need to remember is that if you use a lower crossover point that is recommended, you have to use less power. So this crossover point is recommended for full rated 100 watts. If I use, let's say 2000 Hertz, I cannot play it at 100 watts. That's gonna be lower, let's say, 80 or 70 watts. If I'm gonna play with this slope, let's say 1.5, that's gonna be maybe 20 or 30 watts. So the only thing that you're compromising is the power handling. Now, why is that? That is because of excursion. Every driver, tweeter included, has X max. So even on this one, you can see, um, Linear coil travel, X max, so 0 0.5 millimeters. So this is extremely small. For this mid-range, this is say, uh, X max, I don't see it, but it's small. So every driver has an X max. And uh, here. So this is, uh, I just made with Gwyn ISD a model of uh, Alpine Type X, six and a half inch mid range, uh, mid base driver. It's like in a component, so typical six and a half. It has a uh, uh, plus minus three uh, millimeters of X Max, or maybe six, or maybe five. It doesn't matter. Let's say three because it shows three. And then 
we can apply the signal. I don't know how much is rated, but let's say, let's put uh, 10 watts. So 10 watts, if I don't have any crossover, yeah, I can play without exceeding X max, eight watts. So if I have a six and a half inch driver, yeah, in the doors, let's say, and I don't apply any kind of high pass crossover, I can play it, I can still play it, but only with eight watts. If I'm gonna increase it, let's say 15 watts, and we're gonna increase the volume, it's gonna go over X max, and the driver is gonna bottom out. So basically you're gonna damage the driver. So in order not to damage the driver, we need to apply a crossover. So let's say for this one specifically, I'm applying uh, Linkus Riley, uh, fourth order, so it's 24 dB at 80 Hertz. If I'm gonna apply the crossover, look what happens with excursion. It cuts the excursion down dramatically. And now what I can do, I can increase up to, how much was it? 70 Hertz, uh, 70 Watts, sorry. I can increase up to 70 Watts and it still takes. So if, let's say, I increase this one to, let's say, if I cross it at 100 hertz, yeah? At, cross at 100 hertz, how much can I give it? 150? I can give it 150 watts, and it's still going to be fine. So the higher you cross the driver, the more power you can give it. The lower you cross it, the less power it can take before bottoming out. Now, you cannot really um, test X max of the driver. How do you know if the driver is reaching X max or not? So the typical way that people do is just listen. If you play like, let's say a sine tone of whatever frequency, 50, 60 Hertz or whatever. If you play a sine tone, and you increase the volume, when the driver, let's actually change it to a bit normal, let's say 70, uh, crossover 70, and let's reduce the signal a bit so we can see uh, 60, 50, okay. So if you're playing, vol let's say half volume, 40 watts you give it, it's fine. You keep increasing the volume, 50, it goes tiny bit over X max, you can start hearing some distortion. If you increase the volume even more, you can hear the driver complaining. Complaining, they mean that it produces a lot of distortion. So you can tell uh, when the driver reaches his X max or close to X max, depending on the distortion that you hear from the driver. So again, if you wanna keep lowering your crossover just to find, for example, mid bass. How low can I cross my mid bass? Uh, just play it, full volume, whatever, and keep uh, reducing the crossover until it starts complaining. Or just have a set crossover and increase the volume until again, you're gonna start to hear it complaining. However, for mid bass, and maybe mid-range, like when you start to hear the driver complaining, when it's already uh, distorting too much, the distortion is very high. You want to avoid that, and you want to have as little distortion as possible. So how can you check that? What you can do is you can take distortion measurements. If you have a microphone, you can take distortion measurements of the drivers, with different crossover points and different uh, power applied. I have a video about this, you can check it in the previous one. I did the distortion measurements for the tweeter and for the mid bass and mid ranges. So this is an example uh, of a six and a half mid bass driver in free air with a few different crossover points. So we have crossover points at 80 Hertz, 50 Hertz and 30 Hertz. So if I, have a crossover 80 hertz, I have distortion, which is this one. Actually, let me remove all of these because I don't need them. Noise floor. That's distortion. That's the total THD, yeah? So this is crossed at 80 hertz, and this driver crossed at 80 hertz, uh, plays happily and doesn't complain. Distortion at 2% is fine. If I cross it lower at 50 hertz, it starts to complain. Like here, 
the distortion increases, it's not really happy. Yeah, it's 5%. Is it audible? I don't know, but it complains. If you cross it even lower, so this is ridiculous to cross it at 30, but still, uh, you have distortion 10% and more. So this is just an example for a mid bass, yeah? You can take the same a mid range. So this is a four inch uh, mid range and you have exactly the same situation. If you cross it at 200 Hertz, the distortion is uh, 2% and down. If you cross it lower at 100 Hertz, it's still kind of okay. But if you cross it even lower than that, the distortion goes up and the driver is not happy. Yeah, it starts to complain. So this, you might not hear it, but you can measure it. And these distortion measurements is, it can serve you as a rough guide on how low can you cross a driver. So this driver have, I think it has a FS of, I don't wanna lie, 90 Hertz, something like that. So that's why below 90 Hertz, if you cross it lower, it's it doesn't like it. If you cross it like one uh, FS for the mid range, it still plays, but it's not gonna play as loud because the louder you play, the more distortion you get. And if you cross it at 200 Hertz, so FS 90, you cross it at 200 Hertz, it's plentifully happy, happily to play, play, play that. And exactly the same for the tweeter. So this is exactly the same tweeter that we had in this uh, data sheet, SB29. So remember, FS 680 Hertz, and if you cross it at 1K, so 1000 Hertz, um, here you have little distortion, like 1.5%. And here, distortion is like 3.7%. So people say that on tweeters and mids, uh, you can hear distortion above 1%. So this is on a loud level, but still, you can hear it. So these 3%, uh, you can hear that it's it's not nice. It doesn't sound nice. If I up the crossover for from 1K up to 2K, you can see all of the distortion drops. And now I have maximum distortion at 2% for this driver. And then if I cross it at 3K, the distortion drops even more. 4K, the distortion drops even more. So with this driver specifically, I can play it down to... I'm not going to play down to one because this is too much, but I can easily play cross it at 2000 Hertz, the lowest. So this, again, just a rough guide that, for example, for this driver with making my distortion measurements, I determined that the lowest that I can cross it is 2000 Hertz and it's going to be still uh, be able to play and happy. So, yeah, but this is with 24 dB slope. Now. One question is where you can cross the driver. And the second question is where you need to cross the driver because these are two different things. And between those two things, uh, we need to make a big um, distinction between electrical crossovers and acoustical crossovers. So, if we go to DSP or head unit or whatever, so anything that you apply in here, this is an electrical crossover that is, is applied to the signal. Now, if you have this specific crossover, it doesn't mean that your response is gonna have the same acoustical crossover. 99% uh, of the time, it's not gonna have it. So let's, for example, let me give you an example. If this is my front subwoofer, uh, central console subwoofer, this is a target curve which has a crossover point at 45 hertz and 100 hertz. Yeah, uh, 24 dB link with Riley. So these are kind of ideal slopes. And this is my front subwoofer uh, frequency response that I have. And you can see. Uh, depending on the location, I have uh, again another video about how location influences frequency response. Depending on the location, I have this specific uh, frequency response. Yeah. If I go to EQ window, and here I have, I can apply 
with this EQ filters, I can apply crossovers whichever I want. So if for this response, remember, this is uh, crossed at 100 hertz, uh, high pass, this one. So 45 and 100 hertz. So what's going to happen if I'm going to apply 45 and 100 hertz? So if I'm going to apply 100 hertz crossover, Linkwitz Riley 24, 100 hertz, and uh, let's do the same, 24, uh, 45 hertz. So this, if I apply these electrical crossovers to my response, I have this. And if I'm going to lower this a bit, like this, as you can see, when I apply the crossovers that are the same, the response is nowhere near ideal. So this is a difference between acoustical and electrical uh, crossovers. Electrical crossovers are the ones that you apply here, and the acoustical crossover is the one that you get with your frequency response. So for example, this uh, high pass, uh, it looks like maybe 48 dB per octave slope. So it's a different slope. So we cannot use, and again, 99% of the time, you're not going to use uh, the ones that you want, like 24 dB per octave, whichever. So what, what do we need to use? So for example, for this subwoofer, if I'm going to just remove those crossovers, you can see that this response kind of follows, uh, let me bring it up a bit, there you go. So this response kind of follows the target and the biggest difference is here above like 180. So I, with the crossover, I need to cut this one, but I don't need to touch anything here. So I'm going to choose a crossover that is over 200 hertz. So let's apply, let's say 200 hertz. And there you go. It cuts more. And then I can apply a steeper crossover, something like this. See, that's perfect. So in order to have 24 dB acoustical crossover, I need to apply, that's like 30 dB per octave, 200 hertz electrical crossover and exactly the same for the other end if i need to remove this probably i will need to cross it at like what 20 like a subsonic something like that yeah so this is the biggest difference where you can and where you need because i cannot cross this uh front sub at 100 hertz because I need that response that goes up to 200 hertz, yeah? And I need to apply totally different crossovers. So again, just to repeat myself, the ideal for this target curve is 45, which is here, 45 and 100, and I applied 20 and 200. I know it sounds weird, but this is how it's supposed to be done. Exactly the same for the front, for the rear subwoofer. Let's take an example rear subwoofer, yeah? So the red trace is the target and the rear sub is this one, yeah? So this is my rear sub. And as you can see, if I'm gonna just overlay them a bit more, this is rear sub, let's bring it down a bit. something like that. So it kind of matches the slope already. However, if I'm going to cross it at 45 Hertz here, you can imagine that all of this is going to go down and disappear. So what I need to do is I'm going to need to cross it somewhere like 80 Hertz, 90 Hertz, because I need to remove this part. So again, in order to have a 45 Hertz acoustical slope, I need to cross my subwoofer at 90 hertz or something like that, yeah? So this is when you have um, your frequency response measured with a microphone. And 
when you can uh, compare them to the ideal slopes. So for example, this. Now, uh, the question is, for example, let's take a uh, right mid-range and let's take a tweeter. So for example, this tweeter, we know that this is the SB29, which is this one, and we know that we can easily cross it at 2000 Hertz. So we can cross it somewhere here at 2000 Hertz. Now, how do you mix these two drivers, the mid-range and the mid-base? Where do you cross them? Because according to this, my mid-range, which is this one, let's actually take the left one. I think it's a nicer response of it. No, it's not nicer. Let's take this one. So this one, it plays up to 10K. So where do I cross it? And here is, um, you have kind of a freedom of choice, I want to say, because you can cross it at 2K. You can cross it at 3K. You can cross it even at 4K. But it depends how the driver is going to sound. Will the mid-range, which is a 4-inch mid-range, is it going to be... Is it going to sound nice playing 3 or 4K? Maybe. I don't know. Like, if you're going to cross it higher. Like, some people cross at 6, 7K. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't recommend because this and the top end, which you have as well, is what's called um, cone breakup. So, these, like, the last peaks, usually, they are very harsh with a lot of distortion. And they don't sound nice. So, you want these to be as low like in the crossover as you can just to remove them so again with this if you want to mix and match you can cross it literally anywhere 2k 3k 4k so this is the plan for me as well i'm gonna try a few different crossover points for tweeters for mid-range wh whatever i can and just to see is there an audible difference and uh if there is, what kind of audible difference it is. Now let's take, for example, mid-range and mid-base. This one, mid-base, right mid-base. Where do I cross this? Really, like with this response, again, you can cross it really anywhere. I could cross it like at 400 hertz before this falls down. I can cross it at three. I can cross it at 200 hertz, really anywhere. However, if I have this, I have the freedom of choice where I can cross them. But if I take a look at my left mid base, which is this one, you can see there is a different situation here. Here I have a drop off like below uh, above 200 hertz. It drops off. So if I, ca I cannot cross it at 400 hertz because there's going to be a deep uh, trough uh, suck out. And it's not gonna, it, it, they won't blend the driver. So it's pointless to cross it here. I need to cross it somewhere a bit higher. Yeah. And this is the limiting factor of this specific driver in this location. So when you're choosing your crossovers, you need to find your, um, I wanna say like bottlenecks, which uh, limit your crossover points. Because for some, you have freedom of choice, but for some, you do not have. So for example, for this mid base, I don't have a choice. I cannot cross it high. I have to cross it somewhere here. And left mid, luckily enough, my mid range plays down to there. I can cross it a bit higher and I can cross it at about like 200 Hertz. So I did cross them at 180, I think, in this specific tune. And this is with 100 Hertz uh, protection cross over this measurement. So this is my bottleneck for the mid base is the left mid base. I cannot cross it higher. Exactly the same for the subwoofer. So front subwoofer is this one, yeah? I cannot cross it high. The highest I can cross it is like something here, which is like 130, 140 hertz, because then it drops off a cliff and I, I cannot cross it 200. And I don't want to. So another thing that you have to keep in mind is where your drivers are uh, depending on what frequency they play. In the very beginning, I mentioned these, yeah, 80 and 80. 
So this is a recommendation because most of the time, 99% of the time, again, the subwoofer is in the back, in the boot, in the trunk, however you call it, and mid base in the, is in the front. And according to our hearing, which is like psychoacoustic, uh, frequencies below 100 hertz, it's debatable. Some people have, say, different frequencies, but like most of the time people say that frequencies below 100 hertz, uh, you cannot detect um, the location where it's coming from. If you have rattles, that's obviously another thing. But if you don't have any rattles, below 100 hertz, you cannot detect where the sound is coming from. That's why if you cross a subwoofer for like 150 hertz or 200 hertz, you will it's going to pull to the back and you're going to hear it in the back. So ideally, you want... Uh, frequencies below 100 hertz to be uh, literally anywhere, but anything above 100 hertz, you ideally would want to have it in the front. Yeah. So even if I can cross this subwoofer a bit higher, like 130, I choose to cross it at 100 so that it wouldn't pull uh, the center stage uh, to its location. I want uh, the mid bass in the front to take care of those frequencies. So even if they play like very similar range, see the mid, left mid bass and the front sub, they play very similar, they drop off. However, one is in the front and the other one is kind of in the middle of the car. So the one in the middle of the car, I want it to play below 100 Hertz and the rear subwoofer uh, is gonna play only the low end and nothing from the top. Now, uh, same question is about where to cross the mid base with the mid range, yeah? Because typically you have mid ranges on top of the dash. Mine are in the dash. Some have on A pillars, some have like uh, in the doors or whatever. And uh, a lot of people say that you would want to have as much sound up high on the dash as you can so if you want if you have like for example in this case i have four, four inch mid ranges uh on the dash i would want to play them as low as they can play happily so in this case going to be like crossed at 200 hertz so everything above 200 hertz is going to be on the dash below 200 hertz is going to be in the kicks and below 100 hertz, it can be in the back, potentially. Yeah, but again, it depends if the drivers are happy to play that. So yeah, remember, electrical crossovers and acoustical crossovers are not the same. And the types of crossovers are different as well. So if you have a look at this shape of the crossover, yeah, you have uh, different topologies, which is like uh, Butterworth. Have a look at this. This is Butterworth, Bezel, Chebyshev, Linkwitz Riley. All of these crossovers have different um, slope is the same, but it's different shape. Yeah, and, and depending what you need you can choose whatever you want. So again, let's take, for example, this front subwoofer. Um, let's EQ. And let me show you what I mean to have a better look. Okay, so uh, this is the crossover topology. Yeah, so I have Bezel, I have Butterworth, and I have Linkwitz Riley. And these are different slopes. So if I have 200 Hertz crossover frequency and I have, let's say, Linkus Riley uh, 24, which is this, the response after the electrical crossover is going to look the same. If I would choose same slow but Butterworth, you see, this pops up. Is different. If I choose again, same slope, same everything, bezel, which is this one, I have all of this pop up. 
So the crossovers are not the same. And what you have to do is you have to use whichever works best with your response. There's no such thing that you have a system, whatever you have, three-way, four-way, five-way, it doesn't matter. You cannot use 24 dB Linkwitz Riley electrical crossovers on all the drivers all the time on all the frequencies. It's 99.9% .9 of the time, it's not going to be ideal. What you have to do is you have to find an ideal crossover for each driver. So just to summarize, if you don't have any data, you can have a rough guide where to cross your drivers. If you have some data, you follow the data for minimal uh, crossover points. So for tweeters, as we said, uh, two times FS if you're using 24 dB slopes, three times FS or four times FS if you're using shallower slopes like 12 dB or 18 or 6 dB, two times FS. For mid ranges, it's kind of the same. Again, you wanna use something like close to two times FS, but you can, call, you can cross it a bit lower than two times FS, but it depends on the power. Yeah. For mid base, uh, even if the mid base has a crossover at uh, FS at like 60 or 70, you can play it at FS, you can cross it at FS and it's going to be totally fine. You can cross it a bit lower and it's still going to be fine. So for mid base, uh, the FS rule, um, it's not really that important but it's good to follow it as well. Just because below FS, the distortion increases. And for subwoofers, uh, FS, you don't really look at it because uh, subs usually play below FS and uh, it's not a problem at all, yeah? Well, what I need to mention as well for subwoofers, if you have a sealed subwoofer, the only crossover that you need is a low pass but if you have a ported enclosure you might want to think about a, a high pass which is a subsonic filter so subsonic filter is needed because um, if imagine this is a ported box okay imagine imagine this is a ported box and it's tuned at let's say 28 hertz so below 28 hertz the frequency response is going to drop like off a cliff and what's going to happen there is the sound that's coming from the driver and from the port they are out of phase and they cancel each other out and basically the driver is worse than in free air because it's flapping 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 and it doesn't make any noise you cannot hear anything and it's very easy to bottom out the sub so for ported enclosures you need a subsonic filter if you're planning to play uh, lower frequencies than the tuning frequency so if you have a ported enclosure that is tuned very high let's say let's say you have like eight eight inch subwoofers and they're tuned like at 45 hertz so you would want a subsonic filter because if you play like heavy rap music that have bass notes in 30 hertz like 28 hertz that's gonna bottom out that sub so that's why you want a uh, to add a subsonic filter to this and yeah um for mid base as well, remember, it depends on the power. If you don't play as loud, you can cross it lower. But it's still, you can still measure that, all of that, with distortion, if you want. So yeah, I think that covers pretty much everything. Yeah, electrical crossovers are not the same as acoustical. Uh, don't use 24 dB Linkwitz Riley. Use whatever you need, yeah, whatever your frequency response calls for, and uh, spend some more time choosing the correct crossovers. Don't don't just plop anything anywhere unless you don't you unless you cannot measure, or you don't know any data. Yeah, cool. So thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful for you. 
and I will see you in the next one, guys. Bye.